Hags are fey creatures known for their hideous forms and cruel natures. Elizabeth B. Sitt tells us, in A Brush with Evil on Hags, hags delight in suffering, priding themselves on creating new and inventive ways to torment those in their care. But how does one find themselves desperate enough to seek out a hag? And more importantly, how does one escape once she's got you in her grasp? Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am a human Jesticar. Today we'll be exploring the character of Auntie Ethel and the world of hags in Baldur's Gate 3. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more lore and video game related content. There are a lot of you now, so don't forget to like and comment on these longer form videos, that way it supports the channel. As always, there will be spoilers in today's video, so please proceed at your own risk. Auntie Ethel can first be met inside the Emerald Grove in Act 1, selling lotions and potions to the tiefling refugees and the player. She immediately notices your infection and tells you to meet her at her house where she can help you. Unfortunately, Auntie Ethel's help is not the kind you actually want, and accepting it does much more harm than good. It's revealed at her Riverside Tea House that she is indeed a green hag. Green hags are one of several different types of hags in Faerun. They are noted to be the most hateful and are well known for their usage of illusionary magic. Hags are generally known to be evil creatures who rely heavily on magic, deceit, illusions, and even blackmail to lure victims to them. They're deceptive, merciless, and enjoy sowing misery and misfortune onto others. Hags are notoriously dangerous creatures and it is strongly advised that you avoid them at any cost. Attempting to bargain with one will almost always end up with more suffering. Despite their myriad flaws, hags were not just willing, but happy to strike bargains with others. Not out of any sense of generosity, but out of a deep desire to corrupt and torment those around them. Hags approach bargaining more like a hobbyist than a fiend, for they normally don't need or want anything in return, like a mortal soul, they instead seek out to make others miserable for their own entertainment. Hags are also known to form covens. There is a letter found in Ethel's tea house that seems to suggest someone assisting her by sending potential victims her way. Ethel, I've heard business has been slow. Rest assured, I have a job for you. A client fled Baldur's Gate without payment. Do as you wish. In exchange, I have a girl who suits your particular appetites. Her mother's mind is failing. I'll have her sent by the usual route. M. There's an unfinished letter that appears to be Ethel's response to M. I can't believe you let some pup give you the slip. I'd be mortified. Worry not. My red caps nabbed the bugger. The screaming stopped a few nights past, but the sobbing continues. He'll die regretting he crossed a hag. You know me so well. I have the most darling mask for her. The bloodied campsite in the sunlit wetlands is probably the quote bugger M asked her to take care of, and the woman whose mother's mind is failing is actually the halfling who wears the mask of regret. Auntie Ethel presents herself as a helpless old lady, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Ethel is extremely violent and is one of the harder fights you'll encounter in Act 1. She conjures illusions, casts fireballs, and goes in and out of invisibility. Defeating her sets Mayrina, the young woman in her custody, free. However, Mayrina won't thank you for this action. It turns out that she had made a deal with Ethel to revive her late husband, in exchange for her unborn child. Killing Ethel will forever end that deal, so she is not too happy with the player for meddling. You can also negotiate with Ethel if you bring her health down low enough, which gives you the opportunity to get a very useful and unique consumable. Auntie Ethel tells you that even if you kill her, she'll come back. She always does, but it's a messy process that she'd rather avoid. Cheating death is no simple task, which just further shows how powerful Ethel truly is. Whether you spare her or kill her, you can then explore the rest of her lair. In the back room, you'll find a wand called Bitter Divorce, which seems to be the item she intended to use on Connor, Mayrina's dead husband. If you pick it up and follow Mayrina outside, 
you'll be able to use the wand on him. Much to her surprise and disappointment though, the wand does not bring Connor back to life, but instead turns him into an undead thrall. It seems the hag's promise was just as rotten as his corpse. Oh, this isn't what she promised! I wanted him back, back the way he was, not this! There are a few others released if you choose to kill Auntie Ethel in her lair, including the cursed elf Lauren, Thank you. The Mask of Regret, She's really gone. And the dwarf Ephraim, who had been petrified. Thank you. Despite this seemingly happy ending for the people you've just rescued, this is not the last of Auntie Ethel we see. In Act 3, once you've arrived in Baldur's Gate, you'll notice signs posted for an anti-hag support group. You can find the remaining members at Old Garlo's place, where Mayrina is not only their leader, but also has been recently cursed. You can save her by using the spell Remove Curse on the laughing voodoo doll in the corner of the room she's in. Afterwards, the traitor amongst their group will be revealed. Also, if you happen to defeat the masks in Ethel's lair using non-lethal damage, the Mask of Regret Halfling will be among the survivors at Old Garlo's place. Mayrina will explain that she was looking into a recently kidnapped girl named Vanra. It was soon after that she became cursed. She believes the girl could be the victim of another hag. Mayrina arms you with her research, as well as the ingredients needed to make Hagsbane. You can meet up with Vanra's mother, Laura, at Basilisk Gate, where she's frantically trying to get the Flaming Fist's help, but to no avail. You can offer her help instead, and retrace her steps back to the Blushing Mermaid, a local tavern. It's there that Auntie Ethel has once again set up shop in the basement, but this time with a much more convincing disguise. You quickly discover that Auntie Ethel has swallowed Vanra whole so that she can create a new hag to raise as her own. Using hag Spain on Ethel will cause her to cough the girl up, or you can simply knock her out and cut Vanra straight out of her belly. In one of the books Marina gives you, you'll read that hags, including Auntie Ethel, can imbue their life essence into mushrooms. All but the most arrogant of hags know that death is a possibility. As such, they won't hesitate to bend the rules of the material plane to escape death's clutches. To do this, hags use the common and humble mushroom. By imbuing these spore-producing fungi with her essence, she can endlessly revive herself. Neither blade nor bow will do these fungi lasting harm. Instead, fire is your ally. Burn the mushrooms to ashes, and your blade will strike the hag's heart true. This is how Auntie Ethel has been able to resurrect herself from death. No matter how many times you kill her, she'll just keep coming back, just like she promised in Act 1. Destroying the mushrooms using fire is the only way to once and for all be rid of Ethel. Reuniting Laura with Vanra will reward the player with the legendary rapier, Duelist Prerogative, her mother Lenore the Fleet's weapon, as well as the amulet of Windrider. You can also free Captain Grizzly from Ethel's enchantment. You have an old captain's thanks. With Auntie Ethel gone, Marina and the other hag survivors can finally breathe easy once again. Much to Marina's disappointment, Connor does not come back to life, but instead remains a zombie. I thought with Ethel gone, never mind. I'll, I'll find another way to turn you back. You can, however, convince Marina the right thing to do would be to set him free, so that his spirit may finally be at rest. Connor, I love you. I've loved you since we were kids, and you picked me bluebells and asked me to the summer fair, but you're gone. And this thing isn't you. Not anymore. Not everyone can be saved. I learned that lesson from Ethel. I just needed you to remind me. In the end, there would be no real happy endings for her victims, only bittersweet relief and a cautionary tale for all those who might follow 
in their footsteps. Thank you for watching my video. If you made it this far, let me know who you think the mysterious M is in the comments down below. As always, I appreciate all of your support and can't wait to talk to you all on the next one. Bye. I tried. And look where it got me. Chewing hay and shitting pellets.